Absolutely. We've got so many good players going forward. You know, when they go behind, we've seen it, when they, especially away from home, when they come out firing, they've got players like Pogba and uh, Bruno. You know, they're outstanding. Marcus Rashford, Martial, they've got so many options. But when they start going negative, Oli's made a few substitutions there and he's bringing in on McTominay at Sheffield United, where they've only got one point all season, just to shore it up, bringing off Martial. Do you know what happens? They sink deeper and deeper, and they just keep taking punches. And in the end, something might fall for a team like Sheffield United, who should not be beating Manchester United, and they will score an equaliser, and then you throw away two points. They got away with it tonight. They've got away with it throughout the season. They're in a fantastic position, let's face it. You know, as much as we're soaking very negatively about Manchester United, they win their extra game in hand. They're right on the charts. They go second in the Premier League and they haven't even started. As soon as Oli realises they're better when they're on the front foot, put as many offensive players on that pitch as you possibly can, the better. Because they will certainly have a chance for the Premier League if they do. So much to discuss. The midweek Premier League round is complete and some stories in there as well which of course began with Chelsea's defeat at Wolves with West Brom getting a point at Manchester City not enough to keep Slaven Bilic his job more drop points for 10 men Arsenal at home to Southampton five star show from Leeds at Ellen Road wins for Everton and of course critically for Liverpool in the last minute against Spurs a point apiece between West Ham and Palace earlier on week round with Liverpool on top the champions three points clear of Spurs uh, they are a point ahead of Southampton and Leicester who occupy the other Champions League spots. But as Tim says, Manchester United are up into the top six, 23 points. They have a game in hand, which is away at Burnley. If they were to win that, they would be second in the Premier League and only two points behind the reigning champions, Liverpool. Lindelof. Rashford thumps in the equaliser. Fernandes. Pogba. Martial. Ramsdale is committed and Martial has scored. Fernandez again. Now Martial, this is beautifully smooth. That is a gem of a goal. Slung in by Fleck and notched in by the goal trick. So Manchester United win 10 away league games in a row. Just the fourth ever top flight side to do that. Two goals for him, Marcus Rashford taking his tally in all competitions this season to 12. Let's see, shall we, what he thinks about it all. Marcus, well done. Six away wins out of six in the Premier League. Was it a little bit more nervous than it should have been, though, at the end? Um, you know, it's, it's football. It, it, it gets like that. And um, Once again, we've, we've done well to, to respond, you know, going a goal behind, uh, scoring three goals, and then... Of course, late on, if we don't if we don't kill the game off, it's going to be tough at a place like this. So um, today we didn't get anything that we didn't expect. Uh, they, they fought for every ball. They, um, you know, they wanted to win the game and, and, and they fought for 90 minutes. Um, and you know, in the end, we, we managed to get the three points. It's only the second occasion you've started this season with Greenwood, Martial, and Fernandez. How, how much does that help your game? The, the, the freedom it offers, the, the different dimension. Yeah, I think. Um, you know, we, we have the, the potential to, to rotate a lot um, going forward and um, that type of free-flowing football is, is what we enjoy to play in most. Um, so, you know, we have, to, we have to do as well as we can with the, with the team that the manager picks and, you know, that's our job as, as players and today we, we got it right. The third United goal, your second, was exceptional, uh, the move. Were you aware of the role the referee played in it, the advantage? Yeah, he, he played advantage... Um, and you know, in the end, that's probably why we get the goal because it is a it is a foul early earlier running the play. Um, but you know, from there, it's it's about reaction and, and runs and passes. And you know, when we play one touch like that, we can we can do that against against every team in the league. So now, sort out the home form. You, you've got Championship title winning away form. Simple, yeah. Yeah, it's you know, it sounds simple, but you know, the the, the, the difficulty is doing it, and um, it's something that we have to we have to put right. We have to perform better at at home and you know ultimately pick up more points and um, you know as players we just try and take it one game at a time and just keep trying to win games which is what United do. But finally if you look at the table now you win that game in hand you're two points behind Liverpool. This is a title potential season isn't it? Um, you know I think like I said before we take it one game at a time um, it's early on in, in the season there's a lot of football to be played and it's going to be a lot of ups and downs for everyone so we have to um, 
try and find consistency like we found away from home. We need to find that at home, and then we'll see where we are later on in the season. Well done tonight. Thank you. Thanks, well, understandably, Marcus Rashford a little reluctant to say it, so I'll ask Tim instead. Is that away form, with a little bit of home results, title-winning form? It really is. I mean, you have to look at... Uh, we, we don't think they've played well up to now. I mean, we're not overcritical of Manchester United. We just expect so much from them because we, we know they've got fantastic players going forward. I've still got question marks over them defensively, especially with a centre-back partnership. I think Lindelof and Maguire are not good enough. But are they any worse than any other one in the team uh, in, the, in the Premier League? And certainly now Liverpool are struggling with their centre-back partnership. We've got a central midfield player and a kid who on, was on loan at Kidderminster last year. So, uh, listen, there's... They're, they're better than, than most. It's a strange old league. For, for us to be so critical about Manchester United pretty much all season and them to win their game in hand and go second in the Premier League, you have to give them a chance. And when you've got quality like Marcus Rashford and Fernandes and Pogba, I think you've got a chance. We, are we saying Tottenham are in the title race? I think we are. I think we are saying that. But they're nice and solid. They've got a way of playing... They play counter-attacking football. It's not pretty on the eye, but it doesn't have to be. But and they're nice to win their Son game in hand. And they've they're got above Kane. Tottenham. They've got Son and Kane, exactly. I mean, this negative cloud over Man United which seems to never go away. But the facts are, they're going to be second in the league when they beat Burnley away from home, and I expect them to do that if, in their game in if, hand. If, if. No, when? <laughs> <laughs> what did you make of Marcus Rashford there saying we were playing our free-flowing football and that's what we enjoy most? It's like Marcus, the, uh, the boys play PlayStation, yeah? and if they set Man United, which they'll all play with Man United, they'll put all the attacking players on the pitch. They'll probably only have three defenders on the pitch, if that. Really, if Tim was going to manage Man United, I'd almost guarantee you he'd play that front three. He'd play, he'd play Marshall or Cavani, he'd play Mason Greenwood, he'd play Marcus, he'd play Pogba, Fernandes, and then the rest of the boys say, I don't care what you do, but just stay back. That front five are going to score goals, they're going to win, they're going to win or something. That front five... Just stay back and defend. I don't care if it's 4-2, I don't care if it's 3-2 like tonight. But play the attacking players. Marcus wants to play with more attacking players. They're, they're playing... A lot of their goals come on the counter-attack where they're running into space. They've got to trust that front five to go and destroy teams. That front five is as good as anyone's in the whole league. As good as City's, as good as Liverpool's, yeah. as good as Chelsea's. Trust the boys to play together and let them figure it out. Give them 10 games and say, guys, I'm going to trust you to play together, even if it's a train wreck at times. Try and figure it out. Try and figure it out. And the defenders, just stay back. Yeah. I, don't, I don't need you to attack. When they were at their best, that's pretty much what they did. You know, if you had Steve Bruce, you had Pallister. You know, you had Gary Neville, who wasn't the greatest going forward. It, Dennis Irwin. You know, they pretty much stayed where they was. You know, yes, they backed up Beckham and, and, and now and again on the left and right side, Giggsy on that side. But they were the solid base. They had one of the best goalkeeper in the world in Peter Schmeichel in behind. And they just said, you lot attack. You've got one number six. You'd have Roy Keane in there. They need that. It was Magic tonight. It could be McTominay. It could be Fred. So they've got options in that area. And the rest of them have to be given the rein to go and play. Interchange, rotate position, forward runs. They've all got something different. But when you watch them in training, we've been there. When you play with players oh, in, in training who can play, you, co you combine rounder. You love it. When you're picking a five-a-side team, you don't pick the ones who can go and put a tackle in. You pick the ones who can drop their shoulder, go past someone and score a goal. They've got plenty of them. Ollie has to get them on the pitch. OK. Um, when you look at the away form, and I know there's no supporters in most of these grounds at the moment, away from Old Trafford. Six away wins in a row. Six times they've come from behind. Six times they've scored three or more goals in each game. The best part of the Man United team is the attack, by far, yeah? They've got issues still. We're not 100% sure in goal. We're not 100% sure about the defence. Fullbacks don't create, don't get assists like Liverpool. So forget them then. Let them stay back. That's not coincidence, is no, it? No, exactly. So trust the attacking players, which are the best players. Every team, every coach, doesn't matter who it is, you build around the best players that you have. The best players at Manchester United are in attacking areas. There's a front five as good as anyone's anywhere. The, the, those, the, those goals show. Man United get three, four goals a game. Easy. They could do it in their sleep. They did it today. And they could get more. And I just think if you trust the boys to figure it out, give them ten games together and say, guys, figure it out. Yeah? Mm. Attacking wise, wherever people pick up positions, we'll show some clips after of Bruno and Paul playing together beautifully. They don't even have to look at each other, Steve, to but, figure it out. But the obvious question, 
The obvious question I can hear Man United fans screaming at the screen is, we're looking at those results. They are away from home. A lot of the time, they're on the counter-attack. How do they transform the home form to try and get numbers and results like that away from home? Well, select players who can do a bit on the ball, as many as possible when you're at home. When teams come and they sit back and there isn't the space in behind for the Rashfords and the Martials and the Greenwoods with their pace to get at them, when they sit back, when they sit deep, what do you need? Bruno Fernandes doesn't have problems, but the problem Man United has, sometimes it's only him on the pitch to open up the team. You need Pogba on there. Exactly. You need Pogba, you need Fernandes, you need Donny van der Beek. They're the, the guile. You need them players on the pitch, and there's many of them. Because when I pass it to you, if you can't play, you, the only way we're going to get through is if you give it to me again. But if you can play as well, you'll drop your shoulder, you'll go past someone, you'll break lines with your movement, you have a disguised pass. They need to get the guile on the pitch. Man United fans, and we've been used to it. We, I've played against the East, I've played, uh, the East played in the side, but I've played against Man United sides. The best Man United sides have numerous, six, seven players who can change the game. Match winners. They need to get the match winners on the pitch. See, think about it, right? Man United are the best when Bruno creates, right? Bruno creates, and every time he gets them out of trouble. The problem is when Bu Bruno has a bad game and he's had a couple, all of a sudden, who's going to create? No one. So if Bruno has a bad game, you've got Pogba there. Pogba created two goals today. He had some fabulous moments again, and Bruno was pretty quiet. So uh, Tim's right. Get the two architects on the pitch with that front three, plus Cavani still to come back into the yeah. side. There's enough in there to destroy teams. Who cares? You might concede two at the back. You might concede three at the back. But these boys might get you five. And that's the way Sir Alex yeah. played. The way I gauge it is I put myself in the other dressing room. So if I'm Chris Wilder tonight, when an hour before kickoff, when that team sheet comes in, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, please don't be Pogba, Fernandes, Rashford, Martial, Greenwood. Oh, they're all on there. Oh. And so did the team feel like that as well. Understood. What they want to see on there, they want to see Fred, Matic, Matomini, stodgy players. Good players, but they're good if they've got the blend. They're not all good together. If you put them all in your team, then there's not enough guile. If you're the opposition manager and the team in that opposition dressing room, you do not want to see the players who can be match winners. You don't want them. And they've got them at their disposal. They just don't use them enough when teams sit back against them. Very interesting. Much more from Tim and Owen to come Manchester United and into the top six. Let's get into it. <laughs> yeah, it could have been more comfortable, obviously. A couple of reasons for that. We were a little bit sloppy. 3-1 uh, up, we could have scored. Uh, we created some good chances. The corner that led to the second goal wasn't the corner. But then w when it goes in, it's uh, really, really difficult at the end because they are uh, a handful, uh, very unorthodox way, but very direct and physical, and it made it hard for us. Uh, your goalkeeper, Dean Henderson, you gave him a go. Uh, not a good start for him, a wonderful finish for him. Yeah. Uh, Some of his night. <laughs> yeah, good, bad and the ugly. Maybe <laughs> in a different uh, uh, chronologic order, but uh, it's, a, it's a test and a learning. It's always learning. You know, he comes back here and uh, he's probably been looking forward to this for a long, long while. And uh, to get that start, uh, he just shows his character uh, and the rest of the game. Speaking to Marcus Rashford, he, he, he said he really enjoyed the rare chance to, to have Martial uh, and Greenwood and Fernandez alongside him. Yep. It hasn't happened a lot. Um, what, what dimension does that add, and what did you see in Marcus particularly tonight? Oh, obviously, with the with the pace and the skill uh, in these boys, the quality of the touches and movements. I thought the, all three goals were excellent. Uh, then again, I wanted to test them here today because uh, we knew it was going to be a physical test, a fight. They're going to get kicked. They're going to get kicked late after they've been uh, over physical at times. No, you, you, you mentioned you know, a so, few things to Chris at the end. Then. Yeah, we just we. I don't mind a fair tackle, but when it's like a second after the, the tackle's been made, there was a couple right in front of me. So, but uh, I think it's it's one of these games that these boys will learn from. It's a proper game and it's uh, like football should be. So uh, I apologised. I, I went maybe overboard with my with the word, but that's uh, we'll uh, we'll have a drink after me and Chris. And me. Okay, so they're friends again, the two managers, about the physical side. Um, one thing's for sure, when we looked at that graphic before, they cannot keep going behind in games, whether it's home or away, can they? Well, they can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we just looked at the league table. You know, they won't want to. They wouldn't want to. And if they do tie it up, where could they end up? You know, no, you're right. They, they have to put that right. Because we saw again in the Champions League against good sides, you know, when they go to Leipzig, when they go to PSG, you know, play against teams like that. When they give goals away, they can't come back. 
You know, they, that is the difficulty. When, when they've come back against some of these teams in the Premier League, you can do it because you can get the upper hand. Then they come out. They're the best when they got their backs to the wall, without a doubt. When they go behind, they, they just start like they're behind and come out firing on all cylinders and then they can beat anyone. And they can score goals. Although you've been looking at the comparison, perhaps where they need to get to if they are seriously going to be in for this Premier League title? Well, no, we were just not. You think about the Man United way, it's to outscore pretty much everyone, yeah? So... Basically, this is from last season. That basically, Liverpool, Man City, Manchester United, that's where they want to get to, yeah? Man United want to get to that level. In terms of goal conceded, they're already there, yeah? So they're already almost a championship caliber team. Look where they're not, Steve. And this is basically the point we were talking about before. Look at the difference there to Man City, the amount of goals that has gone behind Liverpool. You know, the, the 20 odd, the 30 odd. And the point is, defensively, not really the issue. Offensively, trust the boys to. If they play more together, those numbers I can almost guarantee you will be at least 85 over a full season. What do you think, this, Tim? What, yeah. about the, what about this season then? Because they're outscoring Manchester City. They're a lot better. But Man City have got. I think well, they're having a, a, a striker crisis at the moment. Man City, no Aguero, Jesus can't hit a barn door. They're struggling to score goals. They're missing David Silva. They're missing Leroy Sane. They've got. They've got a real problem. <laughs> but we people know are saying City can yeah, still win the league. Yeah, but we're saying Liverpool. Can, we say, we're saying Man City can win the league if Aguero comes back. If Aguero don't come back at the moment. The, the, have Man City got more goal scorers than Manchester United? No, not at their disposal at the moment. Man United have got more potent strikers than Manchester City have Steve, at this moment in time. And Steve, the point is, City, if they're there, look, you know, look at the amount of goals Liverpool con conceded. Same as United. Exactly, but they're still at the top because they're scoring. They're, you know, they're scoring. City are down there. They're tenth in the league because they're not scoring like they normally do. Those numbers are going to come up when Aguero comes back in. Plus, they're going to get goals. That, you know, they miss Sane. They miss Sterling's goals. They they miss David Silva's yeah, goals. Sane and Silva have gone. I get that, but the reason they're not scoring as many goals is because they don't, have, one player, they don't huh? have as many attacking players on the pitch anymore. Pep all of a sudden is playing two defensive midfield players like Ole. You know, when when Pep plays, Pep used Pep used to scare everybody. He used to play teams and we used to think, this is going to be damage limitation today. West Brom got a point against Manchester City. You know, so City are playing different this year because they're playing a bit more defensive. When okay. Pep gets all the big hitters back, they're going to attack teams. Yeah. And when they do, they're going to destroy teams again. United can do the same. They've got to scare teams again. Yeah, it's very rarely Man United successful when they play two pivot midfield players. Match it to Tommy. Whatever. They might have got a one off result here and there. They're at their best when they play on the front foot and they've got players who can take the ball on the back foot and drive. That's why I was screaming out for Manchester United to take Jack Grealish. They were talking about Jaden Sancho. They've got loads of Jaden Sancho's. Jaden Sancho needs a space in behind. They need it when teams sit back, they need someone to be able to drop their shoulder. Jack Grealish could have done that. They didn't want to take him. They didn't manage to pull up the money to take him, but they've got, still got players. They've gone for the second best thing, which is Donny van der Beek. He can't get a kick at the ball at the moment. He's a good player. You can tell he's a good player because when he comes to the pitch, Pogba wants to play with him. So does Fernandes. They know that he can see him. They rotate positions. He's got guile, sees a pitcher, takes pitches, got a Kodak in his head. Or oh, we see him, boom, round the corner, plays one touch when he, when he needs to. They're good footballers. I can see him a mile off. The stodgy footballers do a job for the side, but not all of them in the team. Man United fans and Man United players do not want to see two pivots in sitting midfield players in their team. The fans do not want to see that, and they're quite right not to want to see that. All of the camera operators are available as well, by the way. Um, <laughs> let's have a look then at 3-1, um, because does that sort of emphasise what you're saying? From I know the goalkeeper made a mistake, well, but from one end of the pitch to the other. Look, Paul Pogba, whether you love him or you don't, he's a fabulous player. You've got to get him on the pitch. I don't care that Bruno's in there. Bruno's a fabulous player. Play them all together. Look at these guys, Steve, what they can do. Look what they can create from this moment. Look where they are. That deep, Pogba. This is what you pay for, the difference in there. And Paul and Bruno are on the same page. Steve, they almost barely have to look at each other. That's how good these two are. And Marcus in these spaces, good luck. You know, he's too good. But this, Tim, this is the angle, isn't it, about Paul. Just Paul have a look at Bruno. Paul's face. His head's up all of the time, yeah? He wriggles, he's touching him, he can feel it. Now he's having a look, where can he go? Oh, he needs to spin out of trouble again. So, oh, OK, I'll show you another trick. I'll go this way. He rolls it, stud rolls it. Now. Here, look at his look there. He sees Bruno. But not only does he see Bruno, Bruno just makes it obvious for him. He knows he's in trouble. He knows he needs to release it. So what he does, presents himself. Give him here, Paul. 
Okay, so now Greenwood's already on his way. And look at this touch, exquisite. Look, just enough. <laughs> Greenwood gets his toe on it. Jackie Elka comes down. There's a yellow card. Great advantage from the referee, Michael yeah. Oliver. And the rest is history. Martial tries to take it on his own. But there's Rashford. He just slips over a very, very poor goalkeeper. Steve, you know what would be good? Just to, just to run it again from the top so people can see it all together, yeah? yeah. Because the point is... Paul is the deeper one, you know. Paul likes to get the ball in deeper positions. Bruno likes to be a bit higher up the pitch. The front three, they're, they're creating the space. And yeah. I think if you, when you see it all together, you think, Jesus, like Tim said, these guys could destroy you if they're all on the pitch. So look at the spacing. Paul, Paul knows where Bruno is and he's, you know, he doesn't even really get a chance to look at him. And look where Bruno knows. Bruno knows where Mason is. And then also Marx can get in there, Bruno's back inside, Marshall. Marcus, how good is that? I mean, it's just get the boys on the pitch and let them figure it out. They'll do it. They'll mm. figure it out. They, they don't even have to make eye contact barely, Tim, do they? And yeah. they can create like that. I don't get too disheartened on Paul Pogba. We know he's inconsistent. We know straight after, it, straight after that he gives the ball away two or three times. He will give the ball away. But so will McTominay. So will Matic. So will Fred. But what they can't do is that. Exactly. They can't do that. They can't, def exactly. they can't turn defence from attack in an instant. And, and Fernandes wants him. If you said, who's the best player they've got at the moment? Bruno Fernandes, I would say. Yeah. And so if I'm, if I'm Oli, I'm saying to him, who do you want to play with? I'm telling you he's saying, I want Paul Pogba. I want Paul Pogba, not because he can keep the ball, not because he can run around, not because he can tackle, because he can do that. Because he can play with me, he can combine with we, we can break teams down. That's why he wants Paul Pogba, and that's why I want to see Paul Pogba in that Would you start him all the time? All of just... the time. All of the time. He's a world-class player, despite what he, the negatives he gives you. And I admit, he's not consistent. He's, if he's allowed to play with freedom, he won't want to leave the football club. He wants to stay at Man United. It's the biggest club he's ever been at. It's the biggest club he's ever going to be at. OK. There were two sides of him again at times tonight that you, you've picked out? Well, look, the, look I, the, there's just a couple of clips here and it kind of, in a way, it sums up Paul Pogba at Manchester United. At times, brilliant. And then other times, you think, oh, he gives it away. Gives away too cheaply. He's too good a player. This. W when Paul makes mistakes is when he tries to body people. Because he's 6'3", and he's really strong, he tries to hold people off first, yeah? And, and, and sometimes, he just got to play quickly. See there? He's looking to try to strengthen people off again. Gives it away. You know, and the thing is, it seems right. Paul can do this. You know, he can make mistakes. He can give it away. But you know what? Over the course of 90 minutes with, with Bruno and with, and with Marcus and Mason, they're going to create enough that they're going to beat teams. They did enough today. Yeah. And I think over the course of a 38-game season, if those boys are trusted to play with that front three, I think they're going to be... Forget just top four. They might compete to win a league again. If you keep whacking a player like that every time he gives the ball away and never look for it again... You get to give him the confidence. I'll be saying to Paul, Paul, you're a special player. Be responsible at times, depending on the game stakes, when we need to just yeah. keep the ball simple. Get that out of the game. He can still develop. But what I'd be saying to him is that you are special. You can turn defence into attack. I want to see you on the ball more than most players on the pitch. You and Fernandes, I want you to have the ball because I want to see you give the ball away more than their, their midfield have it. And he will do that. He keeps the ball, he give it away, but he can win you the game. OK, and of course, Martial and Rashford have scored again tonight. But 3-2, they can have these situations where they make life very difficult for them. Yeah, but you know what, Steve? This, this can happen, and it can happen to any team. Sheffield United are good at this. They get plenty of bodies in there. And the point is, Steve, these guys you, back hang there... Hang on, you say that can happen to any team. It can happen, look, it Why? Can, it can happen to any team because they, they squeeze you in there. You can't really get out. It's a great delivery. So it can't be avoided? No, of course it can be avoided. But the problem is, we have, look, we have another angle that what Man United are doing zonal. They've got four, four or five players at the, front, uh, at the front of it there. Look here, Steve. It can be avoided because all, Tim, all these guys are here. They're not marking anyone. That's a zonal, yeah? What, what, who are you marking? You're not marking anyone. Harry Maguire should say, lads, there's five of you there doing nothing. Yeah. The goal happens there, yeah? So somebody's got to say, lads, there's five of you, not one Sheffield United player. Tim, somebody's got to say in there, lads, there's five of you, yeah. we're not marking anyone. Somebody come back here. Look at these boys here. The cavalry's coming, by the way. Yeah. You know, you can deal with it. Look, he can't get out. No. The goalkeeper can't go but, anywhere. But, but Owen, is... Owen, Owen, when you're playing Sheffield United at Bramall Lane, that's no surprise 
to a manager or a coaching team. No, but the manager can only do so much. This is what he's saying. He's saying, you take this area, you take this area, zonal marking. If we just stop it there, right? There's no one to mark. There's no one to mark here. They have to own it on the pitch. He's the captain. Look, he stands. He can see everything. Maguire's got to say, listen, guys, we've got an overload at the back post. I'm going out there. Paul, you stay where you are. You're still covering this area. We've got four of them doing the same job, covering the near post. And he's free on the... Bulldog's free on the edge of the, uh, edge of the box if the ball comes out Tim, there. The thing is, I would, Tim, the one thing I would say is, these little guys here, yeah? The little guys normally got the near post. The big lads, Marshall and Pogba... Get back here. The big boys are coming, yeah? But, but my point is, when you run on the pitch tonight, Owen, for Manchester United, on, and Sheffield United get a corner, you know, you, you've spoken about it, you know your job and what you're supposed Steve, to do, surely. Steve, I know my job, yeah? Right. But I look around and I see what's happened on the pitch and I realise there's a problem back there. The, the gaffer why might, is there a problem? The gaffer might tell me to stand there because I'm supposed to be there. But if there's nobody there, i got to go where the problem could be. i got to go. I got to step back and realise, look, football's the ultimate team game. You've got to complement each other. If team's overloaded with four guys, and I don't have any, plus with the other four guys I'm stood with, i got to go help Tim. Yeah. And the top players, I don't worry about what my manager's telling me, saying, yeah. oh, and you should be there. I go, the problem's over there, and I'm going to go help Tim. And that's all you need. Man United need a couple more leaders to say, lads, Nothing at the front there in that zone, right? We might, have we might have worked on it, but Chef United might have seen that. That's why that ball comes long. Why do you think they're covering Dean Henderson, the two players? Why do, why do you think they are? Because they want to get the ball there. They're not worried about hitting it short in, where United have five. Yeah, the one, one extra point I would say. When you're zonal marking, you're already standing in that position. And when someone gets a run on you, it's impossible for you to leap. And I think you show, see there, Lindelof actually gets his head on the first ball. He heads it onto the back of, of uh, McGoldrick into the net. I, I can't remember the last time McGoldrick scored two goals. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's a <laughs> poor indictment. That's moment. a sad indictment for, for Manchester United. The defenders are not good enough. They have to improve. They're not the worst. I've already made that point. They're not the worst, but they're not the best. So I think they have to improve. Organisation set plays, Tim. Organisation has to improve. Man, the first goal they give away tonight was a poor goal, and that was built, in my opinion from the coaching team. Maguire has to own it, but why are you playing out? You're starting, for, there's no rush, but you're starting in a wrong position, first and foremost. Get yourself out, open up on your left foot and give it to Tellers. That's all he had to do. Tellers is out there, Owen, if you pinpoint Tellers. Yeah, Tellers is up there, and the point is, look, Chef United are pressing, yeah? So Harry shouldn't really make an angle, and if he's gonna make an angle, he should, he, he should be a bit deeper. You know, Tim, he's too high there, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, this angle isn't the best one. But the point is, if Chef you press, yeah, then the, the ball can go into a different position. Harry gives Dean a terrible ball. I'm with Tim. I think it's a terrible ball. And that's why the goal happens. Dean makes the mistake. But really, this is the angle there. Look at Lindelhoff's position, right? This is, th this is the width that you need, yeah? yeah. Because if, if Lindelhoff's there... Watch what happens. He can press him instantly if he takes a bad touch. If he's there, he's not even an option. So Lindelhoff has the width. Look at Matic. Matic is telling tell Maguire, him. who's not in shot, he's telling him, Harry, wider. He needs to be wider and to be deeper. And if we run this on... Look at him there, Tim. His, his body shape's all wrong, so he doesn't allow for that. He needs to let that run across his body and Tellez is out there, and then it's away from the danger. What he does is close himself up. We know he's not good on his left side. He's a right-footed centre-back playing on the left-hand side, and his first touch is back in there. But not only that, he waits for Oli Burke here. He waits for him to get a little bit closer to the goalkeeper before he rolls it to him. It is a, I mean, he's absolutely thrown him under the bus. It's a poor error from your captain. You know the, gu the guy's going to be under pressure. The manager's thrown him in. He's not sure. Is it De Gea? Is it Henderson? Everyone's been screaming out for Henderson. He knows this kid gets an opportunity to play tonight, and he's absolutely done him up a kipper. <laughs> but Credit United's response, <laughs> technical terms in this coaching clinic, <laughs> Credit United's response, Owen... Look, United start slow, but they find a way because they got top players. And Sheffield United had their warning, didn't they, with these yeah, rushes? Look, and United were playing a bit different. The boys were trying to make runs and behind. That's Marcus Rashford trying to run and behind there. They get another angle there. Marcus trying to run and behind that threat. They were worried, they were thinking about that threat, Tim, weren't they? That ball and behind, yeah. and the boys were making good runs, but they were just offside because Sheffield were playing a bit high. But to be fair, if you give these boys continued opportunities. They're going to get in. They're too good. They figured it out. Marcus figured it out with, with just that run that he makes there. And just watch Marcus. This is the thing I love about good players, smart players. Yeah? 
Sheffield United think they're set, right? They think United are going to go back. So because they're going to go back, they think, right, we can squeeze up. Keep an eye on Marcus. No this, pressure on the ball. No Lindelof. pressure. But look, watch this. This is why Marcus is a top player. Rather than run that way, which another player would do, watch where he goes. Because he knows he's offside if he goes there. There. Impossible to be offside. I don't care how good a defence you are. If you make that run with a good forward pass, that's what happens. If you watch it here, just, just stop it now. I mean, we're going to go back. We're going to show you and see this again. The concentration from Marcus as that ball comes over go. is him. unbelievable. It's, look at the look at the concentration. One thing at a time. He's not thinking about scoring now. He's thinking about control first. I need to kill that ball dead. Eliminate any sort of defender. I don't care where they're coming from. They cannot touch that ball. And then his concentration on his finish, he just powers it. He's got no respect for Ramsdale. He's just saying the net is catching that, not the goalkeeper. Brilliant finish. <laughs> Brilliant. But the, the concentration in his eyes, just watching that ball come over, one thing at a time. I've already done the run, that's the easy bit, and then the control and finish was exquisite. 2-1, Martial needed his goal, first in 10 games. What about Pogba, getting back to Pogba, what about his role in it? Well, you know what, Steve, it's not just about Pogba, it's about everyone. The point is, if we can just stop it here. If we can just, look, this is the one thing I think is one of the most important things in football, which United don't do well at times. There's Bruno Fernandes, yeah? There's Mason Greenwood. There's Marshall, and there's Rashford, yeah? Look where Pogba is in there. The point is, when these boys come too short, they take away the, the space from Bruno and Pogba, yeah? So if these boys stay high, they allow these boys to do their job. And watch what happens when you allow two of the best players to do their job. If we can just run it on, watch Bruno. Tim, he sets Pogba, doesn't he? Because he knows what's going to happen. And look, when the boys stay high, it gives them the opportunity to run in behind to this space because this yeah. is where the goal is, Steve. Well, this, this pass can't, cannot be underestimated. It looks like an easy pass. It is. But the appreciation of the pass to give Pogba the, the opportunity to play that first time creates the goal. He loads the gun for him and he just turns it around the corner and it's a great run. The timing of the run and, uh, of Martial and Pogba's pass. Look, whip it's around the corner. Impossible for anyone to defend. That's beautiful. That is, that is just beautiful football. Bruno knows exactly what he wants. Paul knows what he wants. If you get the spacing right, these boys will figure it out. Look, Marshall's telling Pogba what to do. Yeah. Because he knows, look, give it to him. And watch this. And he knows, I'm going to make that run and beyond. That's the space there. That's where the goal is. Yeah. Goalkeeper can't get there. Defense is too high. Let the boys figure it out. Bit of check on it. Goalkeeper makes a bit of a mistake. And a, and a real...